First of all, good morning, everybody, and uh, it's great to see so many uh, people out early, but that's the, the life of people working in construction. We get up early and we try and get the work done. Uh, I want to thank Adam, I want to thank John uh, for the kind invitation to be here with you today. Uh, I think um, I won't detain you too long, but I just wanted to give you a few little snapshots of things. First of all, from my own perspective, and secondly, from the perspective of government and what's happening in the construction and what's happening in the world nowadays. And I suppose um, you, it's, it's great to be, to be here in Galway, and I suppose the, the most important thing is that the event, as um, Alan said, it's in the, G Ho the Galmont Hotel. It's, it's also in Galway, and I'm from Galway, so that all adds up. There are all the, G all the Gs uh, searched out for you. But I suppose the most important thing I want to say is that I just want to give a little, uh, I suppose, uh, a small little bit of history about myself for the, those of my friends who are here who know me. Uh, but for those who, who don't know, know me, I just want to give you a bit of an idea of where I come from and my interest particularly in, in this whole area of BIM and, and what you're at. Um, I, first of all, in 1975, which is not today nor yesterday, I started my uh, studying in uh, the RTC in Galway at that time. Uh, and, and the idea was that I did construction studies to find out what I would like to do within the construction industry. But I very quickly took to the uh, area of quantity surveying, uh, mainly because it was a very logic, logical type of approach, which was how much, what was the cost, and that was it. And I was able to add and subtract and multiply, so it was easy enough. So I suppose I spent uh, a number of years finding my feet after that in the construction industry. And uh, basically, uh, the equipment at the time would have been a, a basic calculator or an adding machine and a scale rule and a pencil dimension paper. And we worked away on devising um, bills of quantities which were typed up manually and we punched them. And I remember one particular project we were doing uh, working with a professional quantity surveyor, we finished at five o'clock in the morning to get it on the train, to get it to Dublin for the Department of Education so that it could go out to tender the week before Christmas to fulfill some political promise. So that was for Monagisha College, actually. Uh, that's a while ago now. So I worked in the private sector for a long number of years, and uh, then in 2007, I had uh, some divine inspiration where I ended up coming back to uh, the RTC or GMIT, as it had become known, as a lecturer in quantity surveying. And there I met with a, a huge amount of colleagues who were like-minded uh, in their, uh, I suppose, <coughs> quest to make sure that students coming out of the college were prepared for industry. And it was there that I was first introduced to BIM. And I suppose it is ironic that in, um, January or February of 2016, I got elected to the Dáil, and I spent my first year as Minister for the Minister of State with responsibility for the Office of Public Works, uh, which was a, and a beautiful fit for me, coming from that, that from the background I had. And then uh, on the 16th of October last year, I was appointed to the role I have now, and part of that role includes digital development, and I think uh, that's where I want to just have a quick a few words with you. Um, at the moment, I suppose that uh, BIM has been the single most uh, innovative uh, development in the construction industry and will continue to be uh, the innovator and the cutting edge uh, process that will bring the construction industry along the next 20 to 30 years. And I suppose two things that come to mind when I talk about government and we talk about where we're at, um, in order to achieve uh, what needs to be achieved in terms of <coughs> digitalization. One of the things we need to have is the infrastructure. And when I talk about the infrastructure, I talk about the National Development Plan. And our National Development Plan, our, our, sorry, our National Development Plan, and then on top of that, our National Broadband Plan. And if we are to succeed uh, for the people of Ireland, we need to introduce and sign up the contract with the uh, provider for the National uh, Broadband. Because there are 550,000 premises, including small businesses, farmers, self-employed people, who do not have the, uh, the necessary uh, 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 equipment uh, and, and broadband to actually be able to work with BIM. And I think in, in order to ensure that we can do that and do it in a rem re work remotely, it is an incumbent on the government and on us to provide that. It will represent a huge investment of almost 100 million per local authority area 
over the next 10 years, and it will provide fibre optic broadband that will be kept to the highest speeds for the next 35 years. And private, uh, the private sector have failed to do this in, in this 550,000 premises, and I think we're going to do that. So I look forward to that contract being signed so that the people who don't have broadband and who need to compete, uh, and also that we provide an equality of service. So I'm looking forward to that. I suppose over the last week, you would have seen as well in the national and international media the whole issue about climate change. This week, uh, last night, we had our president talking about it. Uh, earlier in the week, we had the young girl, um, um, Ms. Thunberg, talking about it as well, about what is demanded of us in the world nowadays in terms of climate action. Our government have um, launched the All of Government Action Plan for Climate Change, and it will have far-reaching consequences for everybody, for individuals, for um, local authorities, for business, and also for government. And I suppose it is a challenge, but I think it's also there's a lot of potential in it. Uh, the idea that we can continue on the way we're continuing uh, is, is, no longer, um, is no longer acceptable. You see the stats where we have all of the uh, changes that are happening to the ice, to the sea levels, and when I look at what we are investing in flood defences at the moment in this country, and I think, are they actually designed strong enough to take what will be coming in terms of the rising uh, sea levels? It's very, very, very interesting, very, uh, I suppose, worrying that we have such uh, a, a fast pace of uh, progress. So I think that's why uh, BIM and all that goes with BIM is something that will provide for us uh, tools to make sure that our buildings of the future will be designed in a way that uh, will be able to uh, be resilient and also make sure that they're built in a way that we um, take account of new materials and all the innovation that's coming with that. Um, I suppose I go back to the fact that when I was a quantity surveyor uh, and practicing, um, some of the things that, that I used to, uh, I suppose, um, get frustrated about would be the fact that uh, changes would happen in a building. And I often remember sitting or standing in a building site and looking at something, a problem where you had a beam and a column and a duct and they were all clashing and you might have six people standing around looking at it, wondering how we solve the problem. By the time we got the solution, and by the time we got the solution in place, and by the time we got rid of all of the materials the, uh, 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 from the demolition uh, to try and rectify the problem, uh, we, I used to say, who's paying for all of this? And at the end of the day, the client was paying for it. So I think it's important that uh, we address uh, all of these issues, and I think what, what is happening with the building information modeling and all that goes with that, and the digitalization of our designs, it is uh, something that we would see Hopefully, we will see a building being designed, being constructed with certainty in cost, certainty in time, and also certainty in the quality of what we're building. Um, I remember as well, uh, back in the day when we'd be looking at things, uh, we'd prepare a bill of quantities, and we would have, sorry, we would have a lot of um, what I would call uh, contingency sums, and we would have provisional sums and all this type of thing, because we had unknown factors. But I think nowadays, with the innovations we have and the designs we have, that we will prepare better and that we will have less uncertainty in, in, the, in the whole process. Another area that's under my remit is waste and waste disposal. And I think with uh, what you're doing uh, with, with CETA, it's very important to say that when we are now building and designing, that what we need to be doing, and we are doing it, is to reduce our um, waste. When I was pricing work, we used to price uh, materials plus 10% for waste. If you take our national development plan of 116 million, take 35% for materials, include terms, take 10% of that, it would be 1.75 billion, which we could use to build rather than to get rid of our waste. So I think it's important that these kind of figures are thrown out there. Um, what is in it from a government point of view? I think it, what it means is that we'll have more efficient, we'll have more efficient uh, buildings, we will have more efficient uh, ways of building, and we'll also have better quality. And I would like to acknowledge uh, Enterprise Ireland and the work that they're doing with you in, 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 in trying to bring everybody along with this. 
I think it's important as well that the Construction IT Alliance is, is very important. The Office of Public Procurement and, of course, the National uh, are, are, the Office of Public Works are also very much involved in, in this whole area of change. And the results we will, we will achieve by your endeavours will be we will have savings in how we construct our buildings, we will re reduce the mistakes, we will reduce re uh, waste, and we will give the client first time round what they actually want. And I think the other big area of uh, possibility and, and is the fact that when we are planning our buildings, we can use the technologies we have in the spatial planning to make sure that they are modelled in a way that there's less people who are objecting to buildings going up because they will be able to see in reality exactly how they're going to affect their lives rather than relying on hearsay. hearsay. And I think that is one of the big areas where we can have uh, improvements because right now, for, whether we like it or not, we have a huge amount of what we call judicial reviews on plannings because people have a perception that they are bad or whatever. And board, bo and board plan all resources are more and more going into defending judicial reviews than they are going into actually um, getting on with adjudicating on, 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 on plannings. So hopefully uh, the government will be bringing forward some legislation which will help there, but I think the process of building information and modelling, will, the BIM modelling, will also help there. And I was in Barcelona and, uh, earlier in the year and I saw firsthand how a building in its con uh, conceptual stage could be put sitting into where it was going to be in the middle of a city. It was actually all through the daylight, nighttime hours, how it affected all of the neighbourhood around. And that's the kind of public consultation we will be able to have with, with BIM. And I think that will inform people better and inform uh, the public better on what the buildings are all about. Um, lastly, I just want to say to you that um, it's, it's um, when we, when we look at all of this, I suppose, and this has come back close to my heart, the, the whole uh, process we will, that you're going through and the, I suppose the innovation that you're involved in, it's very important that we have education uh, to make sure that our students are well equipped coming out from the colleges. And that takes investment. And I think as well as that, we need to have uh, more government investment in third level education and, uh, and in second level education to make sure that the equipment is there the, uh, uh, so that people can, students can work on it, and also that staff are trained, because what's happening at the moment is that we're moving so fast with the digital age that everybody is, is uh, scrambling to keep up. The other uh, thing is that the collaboration between government and all stakeholders is very important to maximise the potential of, what, of the great work that you are doing. And I think the other thing we, we, what you are doing is looking at international best practice to make sure that we're not repeating something that has already been done someplace else and that we learn from the mistakes and the lessons of others. There are some challenges in all of this as well. And I suppose going back to the uh, small business people and uh, smaller uh, consultancy practices and smaller building contractors, there is an investment required from all of these to make sure that, the, the, that they are up to speed with all of this technology. And I think we have to take account of that as well. And I, I do believe that if students are trained and if they come out with the, with the right uh, approach to it, that we can provide the leadership to make sure that everybody moves together and that we leave nobody behind in this digital age and especially in construction. I want to wish you well this morning uh, and for the rest of the day because, you know, and I said this at another conference just today, that when, when you have a gathering like you have today, you have people who are going to meet one another. I've met so many people coming in there that I knew, former students and all of this, and I hadn't seen them before I might be, uh, in, in a number of years. I might have been emailing them or whatever, but I think the important thing is together to meet, to actually uh, eyeball one another, to discuss what the issues are, to share your, your experiences, and I think the best way of doing that is by having a gathering like this. And also, uh, it's important as well to have a bit of fun when you gather. So I wish you well for the day. Thank you very much.